holiday oh, fun stuff. Cool, Larry, uh, given the comments you send my way, I can't wait. I can't stand to hear <laughs> this insufferable noise that harasses the ear. Why must I tolerate this year after year? All right, I got the music going. Kicky pop rock vibe. You still with me? I'm right here. All right. Hi, and welcome to Seattle's number one comic book podcast, the podcast that is dedicated to the first issue of your next favorite comic. And tonight it's a bonus episode with my good friend Ryan Berg, all the way from, say it, Maui, Hawaii. Yeah, I got special music to take us out at the end of the show, but uh, tonight we are just going to be, what, shooting the shit? <laughs> I think that's a safe way of putting it. Absolutely. I, I was before the show. So Ryan and I, Ryan has given me the best gift on his way out the door to um, to move to Maui. He gave me a crate full of wonderful comics. I call it my bird box. Oh, well, that's fantastic. I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna paint it gold. Eventually, I'm gonna paint it gold. And I dig into it once in a while. And I love. I love. 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 I never oh. told you this, but I love the fact that uh, I got dupes in it. Like you and I oh, have yeah. similar tastes. Lots of Batman. And yeah, uh, I... and I got dupes, and I love giving comics away. And I was like, oh, great. Now I can give that old one. <laughs> you know? well, it's fantastic. Right on. I, you know, Larry, I, honestly, when we were going, it was like everything must go. And I, I thought to myself, if there's anybody who I can give all these to, it is my main man, Larry. And he will find a way to either use it, repurpose it. Or put it in a bird box and paint it gold, and that will be perfect. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what's happening. I mean, like, I dig in it every once in a while. And, uh, you know, I, um, I'm i an electrician. I go into homes all the time, and there are lots of paper in people's houses. I got lots of paper, and I'm always just like, man, someday I'm going to go paperless, but not yet. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's not as easy as it should be, but it's getting there. No, it just depends no. Of like, you know, it's, but it, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, it's kind of hit or miss, right? Where in terms of going paperless, it's like you have to be sure that you've got all these PDFs of everything that you've created or somehow, you know, manage or wrangle. And then you save it and keep a backup of it so it doesn't all crash and vanish. Because oh. hard copies, you know, hard copies can disappear in a fire, right? But, but like digital copies can just disappear and be gone. So you have to be very careful. I, I, you know, I, I revisit things a lot. I, I really do. I mean, like, geez, how many times have have, have I read Sweet Tooth, you know? Or, yeah, that's, yeah. You know, Dark Knight Returns, you know, like, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But a lot of the stuff, or, or the Parker stuff, oh, my God. And I have all of those, and I've given them all away, and I, and I hate myself for it, because I'm like, but I'd really like to look at that. But you know who has all of that now? Comixology. Oh, really? Oh, that's they, nice. So now, cool. uh... James, my James, uh, the regular host who has moved to New Zealand. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, New Zealand? We do the show from New Zealand. <laughs> We're that's international. Nice. We're international. Oh, that's awesome. That's so great. Yeah. So, uh, he, uh, um, he and I have, uh, uh, we got, uh, um, you know, we just mostly do comicsology, uh, digital, and, uh, Ooh. we're always picking stuff off of, uh, if you have six bucks to blow and tons of time because Comixology Unlimited gives you so much stuff, so much wow. stuff for free. Well, not free, six bucks a month. Yeah. I so, have to look into that. That, looks, that sounds pretty good, actually. Where do, you, where do you find your comics? Well, right now, honestly, um, I only caught up on the ones you sent me. I haven't read them since I left Seattle. So. Oh, you've been comic bookless. I have. It's true. Here's the, here's the rub. So, you know, I basically got nearly everything I was reading through the, you know, the Seattle or King County library system. And oh. here, they're, they're, it just, it just, it's not nearly as robust. So, like, you know, I, I can't get it. And then as far as, like, you know, getting electric copies, it's not so simple either. So they don't, they don't typically release ebook versions of graphic novels and collections. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. Which, which I, eventually they may, and maybe they're starting to move in that direction already, but not in terms of libraries. So... Before Comixology Unlimited, I went to the library three times a week. It's not far from my house, and it was 
awesome. You just like oh, get yeah. online and you just and they send you an email when it comes in. It was yep. fantastic. I used to go and get like 20, 30 at a time. I mean, and then it was weird because like you you try to like pre-order them like a few months out and get on the queue because like, you know, anything goes popular. Like anything by Scott Snyder or, you know, Jason Aaron or those new authors. It was just like, you know, so, you know, the minute it popped, it popped. Uh-huh. So, that sort of thing. Well, I, it was, I, 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 I remember I, I got the, uh, I went into the library and I, and I got that card or the, the lady says, okay, well, you live in the neighborhood, but you, you can't prove it until you mail, until you bring back this card that we mail to you. But <laughs> until then, this blew my mind. She says, until then, you can take 10 books with you. And I was like, 10 books? And she's like, but when you get this card and bring it back, you can take as many as 50 books with you. And I was like, that's crazy. Who would ever take 50 (laughs) books? And at one time, I had 38 things. (laughs) I was like, oh, man. I remember, actually, when you could put on hold up to 100 copies of something, and then Seattle cut that back to 50. Yeah, it was 50, and I was just blown away. I was like, wow, oh, yeah. CDs, DVDs, mm-hmm. and comic books. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, public libraries are, are such a boon to our culture and society. I mean, it's honestly where a lot of a lot of people get their start, you know, reading or being exposed to things. I mean, I basically learned all about classical music through public libraries. I would otherwise have known nothing about it. So it's, it's fantastic. It's a resource. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, pay for, I pay for any service that I can get, like, stuff like i just i mean like now now like just in my hot little hands the second i want it comiXology mm-hmm. spotify uh, yeah. uh, I, 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 I subscribe to a news service it's awesome it's just great yeah. stuff just put it in my hands i love it's, knowledge i'm not but, that knowledgeable but i love knowledge <laughs> <laughs> that's what counts my friend <laughs> so what are you reading what you what, what what did i send you anything good Yo, yeah, no, I um, I thought that actually of the stuff that you sent me, I found um, <laughs> the Batman Elmer Fudd special and Shanghai Red to be the most interesting. Oh, that I'm gonna dial that up. That Batman was so good, wasn't it? Like I, it thought- had no rights, no right to be as good as it was. But Tom King's a genius. Did you read his Vision stuff? I that read ministry? Vision. I read the Vision stuff. Holy cow. That stuff was a gut punch. Oh, I know. I mean, finish was a gut punch. Tom King is really good. Whatever he does is really, really good. Oh, and he's, do, he's doing Batman right now, and he, is, and he hasn't stopped. He hasn't done a dud yet. He, he did the, yeah, he did all he this wedding stuff. And, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I looked at that like, kind of like uh, just at a distance, and I'm like, this is crazy. So, but I mean, you, you, I mean, this is the thing. These are characters that have been in, in our culture. I mean, let's think now Batman will be 90 some odd, you know, be 90 years, like in, in the late, you know, twenties of, of our, of our century. So, I mean, they, you have to do things to make them interesting or at least give them some sort of life. Otherwise, what's the point? You know, I mean, like you've got to, you've got to make it interesting. You've got to change them. You've got to like make them, uh, like more nimble for lack of a better term. So uh, the whole wedding thing I thought was fascinating. The, 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 the duality between Batman and Catwoman and then Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle was pretty fascinating. Oh, so you, so, <laughs> so you read the, the, the wedding <laughs> stuff. Well, I read about it. I didn't read the stuff. I mean, I read synopsis of this stuff because I, I mean, I'm a junkie for this sort of thing, but I can't get the actual copies. So they come out and then I read about them. So, oh, now, that, I mean, I, that yeah, wedding stuff. Like, there was a Joker, Selena Kyle, uh, smashed up wedding where Joker. Oh, spoiler alert! If you didn't read it, oh my god! No, no, I'm yeah. not. Gonna, I'm not. I'm not. Actually, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to oh. wait for you to find it eventually. But oh, it yeah. was so much fun, so sinister. I mean, no. it was, it was like rated R. It was rated yeah. R. It was like a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I totally believe it. I mean, like the way the way that mainstream comics are being written now has a very different sensibility than what they than they did when I was growing up. When I was actually consuming them and you know buying them from my my like the, the store right up the street from my house, you know, and they when they sold them off of the, the spinning rack uh-huh. <laughs> many many years ago before I, I could drive to Berkeley and, and spend every last one of my hard earned dollars on on all the the, the comics coming in there. What what did you buy back then? You're, you're... 
I'll tell you what I was buying. I was buying um uh G.I. Joe mm-hmm. and uh and uh Thundercats. I had no what? idea what the X Men were. <laughs> Well, okay, so I got turned on to the X-Men. I got into them right about the time that they took on the Shi'ar uh, and they went to the, the the blue side of the moon where the Watcher lives and they fought and Jean Grey wound up killing herself. I started kind of following it from that point forward. Um, I was heavily into Batman ever since I was a little boy, but not comic book wise, more just kind of like toy and everything else wise. Uh-huh. Like I had uh, Batman, uh, like the Dark Knight Returns stuff with Miller in the 80s. Uh, I, I would say like, I just kind of collected comics that looked interesting when I was growing up. And then when I was like, you know, like heading into my teenage years and then <laughs> college, I got into like that whole world of like, um, of like Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns. And then I got really into Sandman and like Neil Gaiman. And I got really into like uh, other Alan Moore stuff. So my tastes evolved as I kind of grew older and, they, and that stuff was being produced to be consumed by people my age. So it wasn't, the comments weren't being made for kids like they once were. I mean, and I, I don't know now whether they even make comic books for children any longer. I mean, I don't know whether they do. I, I am so far out of that loop, I don't know. So Well, we'll, we'll find out. Every once in a while, we'll, we'll do uh, on the show uh, uh, an all ages. But um, And when I go to the shop, I still buy my physical copies. I buy a lot on digital. Don't tell mm-hmm. the guys. Don't tell the guys at Arcane Comics and more. <laughs> in the in the shadow of the Space Needle up there in Shoreline. Stop by. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, when I go in there, there's a lot of dads in there with their kids, and 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 they have a whole kid section. And I've never perused it, but um, I should. I should. I really should, because it it does have, you know, I'll find I'll find an all age book, and and I won't even know it's all ages until I've read it, and I'm like, oh, hey, this is an all age book, and I enjoyed it. Oh, that's cool. I mean, you know, honestly, I, I think that's grand because I, I think that the the medium. I mean, like, what's funny is is the way that like our entire culture's medium has just kind of shifted in this interesting way. Like now, people want to do long form storytelling on streaming platforms like Netflix or even HBO. Like these these long, long, long stories. They don't want to like have a little two and a half hour movie. They want a movie that's essentially ten to fifteen hours long. It feels like a comic book. Exactly, exactly. And now comic books exist in the realm of the digital medium, and they also exist. I mean, think about the movies that make so much money at this juncture in time. They exist in theme parks, and they exist in the in the original printed media that you yourself purchase. But it's available in so many formats and built around so many different kinds of audiences. It's the way that, like, the, the, the Marvel Universe for film is parallel to the Marvel Universe for comics. But then they, they diverge in some very wild ways. I so, love all those wild ways. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Like, that, that, that's, where, that's where the good stuff is. It, it should, like, you know, I love that, like, the, the latest incarnation of Spider-Man in, in the Marvel Comics Universe is I mean, just a little bit into his teenage years. That makes sense to me. That's uh-huh. a spider that I remember kind of growing up with before he became a 20 and a 30 something year old. Right. So I get that. I totally get that. Right. Okay. Man, we could talk all night. I'm, I'm now, now you mentioned Spider Man. Have you seen the promos or the, uh, the trailer for the, um, Spider Man, was- uh, uh, Spider Verse, uh, yeah, animated really cool. movie. Doesn't that look nuts? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've actually read a little bit of, uh, of the reviews about it, the advanced stuff, and people are like, "This is really like much better than they were expecting it to be." I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm I in. Love, I'm in too. I mean, I, what I really love is the the concerted effort to move past the typical kind of white male storytelling that we have basically grown up with our entire lives. I love the idea of Miles Morales as being Spider Man. I love the uh, you know like uh, God, I can't think of him. I think Amir Khan as Miss Marvel. Uh-huh. I love the idea of just people. Just, you know, it doesn't really matter their color or their gender. Like, it just happens. They just happen to be the person this happens to. And that makes it very interesting because all of the baggage they bring with them, all the culture that they bring with them informs the decisions that they make as superheroes, which I think is really groovy. It's the way that, like, if you want to go back to it, the way that Superman, you know, rather than being this, like, evil godlike entity that could simply take over Earth if he was so inclined, is, you know... Raised by these very, very like modest, you know, Kansas farmers, so he has this incredible moral compass 
So he wants to do the right thing rather than just take the world over. I I, I, I always think that like we we've ta- we we did a we did a uh, spider book a couple weeks ago.